time with Timmy the Tool Man and John. Today, what we're going to show you how to do is install an air oil separator on a third generation Toyota 4Runner with the 3.4 liter V6 engine that is supercharged. The reason why you would want to install one of these is with a regular system, you have a PCV valve, a positive crank case ventilation system. For any factory system with a PCV valve, there's going to be a little bit of oil blow by that happens. When you take your plenums off, you'll notice that there's some blackness on the inside of the air chamber ports. And you'll also see it in some of the rubber vacuum hoses that attach to the plenums. And a lot of people ask that question, why is there oil in there? Well, that's because there was a little bit of oil blow by through the PCV system. With that said, do you need an air oil separator for a stock engine? That's debatable. But with a supercharged system, you're going to get more oil blow by because the engine is operating at a much higher performance level. That carbon buildup can affect the performance of your engine. And there's some other things that I'm not going to try to describe. There's a whole lot of information online and we will provide some links to those websites that describe all the different benefits of having an air oil separator installed on your supercharged or turbocharged engine. The vehicle we're working on today is actually Sean's rig and he chose to purchase a kit from Moroso. It unscrews, you have a fine mesh metal filter in here that filters out the oil out of the air and then the clean air passes through back to your engine and as enough oil accumulates on the fine mesh metal screen it will drip down and be collected in this chamber and then there's a valve that attaches and then you put a 90 degree fitting on here with a rubber hose and then you can drain out that oil into a container of your choosing. So the kit comes with the air oil separator, it comes with some 3 8 rubber tubing, it comes with the valve, a few different fittings, and then it comes with the bracket that you use to attach it somewhere in your engine compartment. This Moroso kit that Sean bought is kind of a generic kit. It's not specific for a install on a third generation Toyota 4Runner. Moroso does make specific kits with custom bracketry where they show you exactly where to install it and it's a nice clean install. They don't make one for a third generation Toyota 4Runner, so we're gonna have to make do with the generic bracket and then some other fasteners that we're going to provide to make it work on Sean's rig. So in addition to the Moroso kit, Sean bought a brand new PCV valve and then we just have a couple small M6 bolts with a 1.0 pitch, some flat washers, some lock washers and some nuts and then we've got some Teflon tape to make these connections leak proof. With all that said, we're going to get into the engine compartment and we're going to show you where Sean chose to mount this air oil separator and then we're going to show you all the steps to get it all connected properly to the engine. Let's get started. All right, so we're on the passenger side of the engine bay and we were trying to figure out where to put this. If I didn't have these spiker engineering hood struts, I would have probably just put it somewhere here on the fender. This would have been the easiest place to route it but these are gonna get in the way and make contact. So we had to get a little creative. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go on the inside of the fender here. And we're essentially gonna mount it right here, right underneath the air tube for the air box. We have a hole in the fender already that's supposed to be used for a mud guard in the fender. And then because this needs two places to mount, we're gonna have to drill a hole. So we've got a Sharpie here just to mark it can use any pen. Kind of get a rough area of where we need to drill. And now we're gonna get a drill bit out and drill that hole out so we can secure this with the bolts and the nuts and the lock washers. With this universal bracket, this was straight. And this is what I'm gonna mount to the fender. When we mocked up the air oil separator, we had quite a bit of an angle. And so what will happen in this scenario is oil will start to accumulate at the bottom and it won't be able to drain out that drain hole. What we did is we slightly bent this bracket that we're gonna mount to the fender so that it sits more straight. It's not gonna be perfect. It's still gonna have a little bit of an angle, but it's better than the significant angle that it was at before. So something you might need to consider 
manipulating the bracket a little bit if you get some kind of generic setup like this. So we got a drill with a really small bit. This isn't the final bit. We're just using this to make the first pilot hole. And then we're gonna jump inside the fender so we can actually drill the hole at a better angle. It's pretty tight here in the engine bay, so we're just gonna get a small hole started. So we have our little pilot hole that we started from the inside of the engine bay. This is the hole for the mud guard that is no longer on my vehicle. But if I wanna put it back on, I can still use the, the bolt that I'm gonna to use to secure the bracket. So I can still put my mud flap back on, but I'm gonna use that hole. So here's the hole that we're gonna open up. You can see this hole is actually gonna be bigger than the drill bit I have. So this one's gonna be a little bit smaller. Safety first, wear some safety glasses so you don't get metal bits in your eye. These two pieces do come separate in the kit. There's just some Allen head, button head bolts that we screwed in here, pretty simple. And then this clamp right here is actually going to clamp on to the air oil separator and keep it locked into place. So we've got some bolts. I'm gonna come from the inside of the fender and just see how this looks. So you can see that's how it's gonna sit in there. And we're gonna tighten this down after we put the air oil separator in there and have the lines routed the way we want. One little tidbit of information when using Teflon tape is there really is a correct and incorrect way to wrap the tape. So as you're staring at the fitting up towards your face, you're gonna wanna wrap it clockwise because when you turn it, you don't want the turning motion of you tightening the fitting into whatever you're tightening it into to actually unravel the tape. So you wanna wrap it in a clockwise fashion. Get a good couple wraps on there and then just break it off. So we're gonna do that to all of these fittings. on there with some wrenches because that's barely any threads and uh it's pretty tight already yeah yeah here use this wrench i just wonder if that's gonna that we have to figure out where that's gonna go like in relation it's like are you gonna be able to turn that so we gotta, we gotta like see. Yeah, that's fine, because we'll be able to get in there. So here's what it looks like with all the fittings attached. For the bottom valve, we just used an adjustable wrench to tighten it. And we chose to have the handle for the valve facing towards the tire, towards the fender. That seemed to be an easy way to get in there through the fender well to get onto this valve. And then these 90 degree fittings are pointed up at a 45 degree angle towards the engine. So the PCV valve is gonna route to one of these fittings and then the other fitting is gonna route back to the intake and make that circle. So we secured the catch can with these M6 bolts that we had. And on the other side, inside the engine bay, we have a washer, a lock washer, and then a nut to secure it. The PCV valve on these engines is plugged into the passenger side valve cover right in the front. It's right here. And then it has a short formed hose that goes over to the intake. So the positive crankcase pressure just gets rerouted right into the intake here. We're gonna disconnect this PCV valve. And if you recently replaced your PCV valve in the grommet, then you probably don't have to pull it all the way out like we're gonna do. These grommets get really brittle and they're hard to get out of the valve cover. And you might find when you try to pull it out, pieces of it are gonna drop inside. And then you might freak out and say, oh my God, there's broken pieces of rubber inside my valve train, but that's not the case. There's actually a little metal box. If pieces drop in, you just gotta get in there and painstakingly fish them out with a little hook tool or maybe a needle nose pliers and you'll be able to fish those pieces out. So don't freak out if that happens to you. This one is still pretty malleable. So I'm just gonna wiggle it out and it popped out just like that, really easy. 
and then I'm going to slide this hose down and get this disconnected. So you can see what it looks like here. Because we know these PCV valves are really hard to get out after a lot of time has passed, we recommend putting a little bit of oil on here. You can use engine oil, whatever you have, maybe even a little grease, but just a little bit to lubricate it. So hopefully it's gonna be much easier for you to remove when you remove it somewhere way down the line. So you just plop it in there like so. We're gonna point the fitting towards the air oil separator because that's the direction of the routing we're gonna choose. So using the hose that came with the kit, we're gonna also lubricate the inside of the hose just a little bit with some oil so it's easier to slide it onto the fitting. Just a little bit will work. We're gonna slide it first over the catch can Okay, that's all the way down. And then we're just gonna measure, figure out a nice bend, and we're gonna mark it. Let me get a pen. I'm gonna cut it right about there. Choose whatever cutting implement that works for you. I have these nice scissors that were actually made by the Crescent Company. And I'm just gonna snip this. <laughs> so we got that cut. I'm gonna lubricate the inside a little bit with some oil again, so it's gonna slip over the fitting easier. That's a little bit of a sloppy fit, but it's gonna be good enough. Okay, we found that this connection isn't super snug, but we think it's gonna be snug enough. It's not really loose, but it, it also slips on pretty easily. If you didn't like that, you can just use a hose clamp and clamp it onto the PCV valve fitting. It's your choice. So now we're gonna use some more hose and we're gonna connect up to the fitting on the opposite side. Slide that sucker on. And then this is gonna route to the intake. And then we're gonna have to figure out where we're gonna cut the hose. So I'm gonna route it up here. Does that look good? Beautiful, you're an artist. What did I do with that? So we chose to route the hose underneath the electrical connectors to the coil packs. That seemed to have a nice bend to the hose. And then I'm gonna mark to where I'm gonna cut this sucker. Okay, I got a mark. And then, let's see, is this gonna be a tight fit or a loose fit? Is it gonna be a hot dog in the hallway? Corn dog in the Astrodome? There we go. There it is. That's pretty good right there. So to go over the routing, instead of the PCV valve going directly over to the air intake, now it's routing to the catch container. The air gets filtered through the fine mesh metal filter. The oil gets captured in there, drains to the bottom of the separator, and then the clean air returns back to the intake. That's how it works. So you can see how this ended up to where Sean will have easy access to turn this valve to open it up and drain out the oil from the air oil separator. He chose not to install this 90 degree elbow that you would connect a hose to to drain out the oil from the air oil separator. This was personal preference. He's just gonna get something underneath there, capture the oil really quick and then close it off. So if you use this fitting, then you would wanna slide over a hose or just direct it into a little container and then close it off. The interval that you drain this out is gonna be personal preference. Should be probably every engine oil and filter change. You might wanna do it more than that, but we think that's probably sufficient. So it's been a little under 5,000 miles and I'm ready for an oil change and we're gonna drain this and see how much oil we caught in the catch can. And as you can see, it's a fairly significant amount, which would end up being pushed back into the system and burned up and making things dirty. So this is definitely something I'm stoked to add to my supercharged 4Runner to keep things a little bit cleaner in there. All right, we're all done with this job. As you saw, 
not too difficult of an install. The most amount of time we spent was trying to figure out the best location to install it in Sean's engine compartment. If you did this on a vehicle that came with a custom bracket and a location already picked out, it's going to be a little bit more straightforward than us trying to figure out exactly where we wanted to mount this in the engine compartment on Sean's third generation Toyota 4. You saw that the air oil separator did collect some oil and it kept that oil from being burned up in your combustion chamber and causing a bunch of carbon buildup which would lower the performance of your engine. So we do believe that this is a worthwhile modification to do to your third generation Toyota 4Runner that's supercharged or maybe even a one that doesn't have a supercharger. It's something to consider because keeping that oil from combusting in the combustion chamber is going to increase the performance of your engine. It would be just like if you had warm piston rings and the warm piston rings are allowing oil to be burned up in the combustion chamber. It's the same type of situation that's not going to be good for your engine. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. We will, of course, be back with more videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care. Bye-bye. Sick mods and sick air oil separators. Peace out and bye-bye.